So there's a new low-cost airline in Africa. It's called Fast Jet, a subsidiary of Lonro Group, and they're threatening to shock the market with rock-bottom prices. I should say, Ed Wint is now with me, CEO of Fast Jet. Thank you very much Hello. for coming on the program. So you had your inaugural flights last week. You're based in Dar es Salaam. Tell us about that. Okay, well, we started our first base in Dar es Salaam. Um, we're waiting to do the same thing in, in Nairobi. Um, currently, we're flying to two domestic destinations. We're flying to Mwanza and to Kilimanjaro. And the response has been absolutely incredible. Mm -hmm. Far more people than we expected to. Um, and we're offering really low fares. $20 for a ticket is unheard of in this region. Yeah, but not every ticket on the airplane is $20. Right. The way it works is if you book early, you can get a ticket for $20. If you book very, very late, you pay quite a lot more. So our average fares are around $70 or $80, which means that a lot of people a lot of people, and it's not just a few, big percentage of people, can actually pay $20. So if you plan ahead, plan what you're going to do, then you can travel by air. So these are people who probably in the past have travelled long distances to Moans and Kilimanjaro to see relatives yes. by bus, for dangerous journeys. Mm -hmm. And now at that sort of price, if they plan their journey, they can travel by an airline. Let's get this out of the way very quickly. Why are you based in Tanzania? Why not Nairobi, which appears to be the natural choice? Okay, we want to be in both places. Yes. Um, we've got an air operator certificate in both places. Tanzania already had the Airbus on their register. Um, Kenya didn't, and so it's taken a longer period of time for the Kenyan authorities to get the Airbus onto their license. Their engineers, their airworthiness people have to learn about the airplane mm -hmm. so then they can supervise. Because you're using the Airbus through A3119, That's right. which is not available in Kenya like you say, but why is it this particular aircraft as opposed to what other budget carriers, the Fly 540s and, and Jetlinks use in Kenya? Well, the other carriers, they've not been real low-cost carriers. Mm -hmm. What people have done in the past is they bought fairly cheap airplanes, but they're 25, 30 years old. They're only 50 seats. So very inefficient. So they're really inefficient. They burn loads of fuel. They cost a load of money to run. And you can't get a low unit cost. Now, our airplanes, 150 odd seats, a very efficient modern airplane, means that I can really, really drive down the unit cost of a seat. Mm -hmm. And that's how you provide low cost. Look around the world. It's always that sort of airplane, that sort of size airplane, and particularly the Airbus, mm -hmm. but also the 737. Those are the two airplanes that really drive down costs and they enable you to go in the marketplace. So you're, gonna t you're taking over Fly 540 in Kenya. What is the timeline for that like and what will you be doing? Well, what we've done in Tanzania is it was a small operation of 540. We shut that down before we started FastJet. Um, Kenya is a slightly bigger operation. So what will happen is as FastJet comes in, so 540 will disappear. And there'll be a very rapid transition from one to the other. We've no intent of running the two brands side by side. Mm -hmm. And quite honestly, you know, FastJet is bringing something brand new to the, to the African continent. Mm -hmm. So do we know when exactly FastJet begins operations in Kenya? I'm going to say it's the first quarter of next year mm -hmm. because it's quite bureaucratic process. It's a lot of um, ticks in boxes and paper to move around. So sometime first quarter next year. I'd love to have done it before Christmas. That was my original intent was to right. try and get in here, but we just won't hit that, um, that target. What kind of destinations are you looking at? Well, from Kenya, obviously out to Mombasa, mm -hmm. but really all the regional um, capitals. So going out to Entebbe, to Juba, to Kigali, um, down to Lusaka. I think even like, slightly longer, but down to Joburg. I think there's a lot of demand for really good value traveling mm -hmm. that, that sort of distance and Harare, those sort of places. What kind of potential is there in the market? Because uh, Kenya Airways and the others have been fairly well established in this scene. Mm -hmm. And Kenya Airways, for instance, also beginning its own budget carrier called Jumbo Jet. Well, They've been talking about Jambo Jet for a for long a time. We haven't seen that yet. Mm -hmm. But bringing in our model is not about taking a market share from somebody else. It's not about coming along and saying, hey, my airplane's nicer, my airplane's cheaper, come fly with me. It's about getting to the marketplace and saying, hey, look, you can now travel for this really low cost on a really reliable, really high quality flight and stimulate a whole new market. It's new people. It's people who haven't flown before are going to start flying. People who fly once a year now, they can fly every month. Business people whose sphere of action has been limited by their ability to travel mm -hmm. will now have the whole of East Africa as their market. So it's that sort of stimulating the market. And it's a stimulation that we've seen throughout the world. We did it in, in Europe with EasyJet and with, with Ryanair. Um, it's been done in the States and South America, Australia. It's even been done in Russia. Right. And here in Africa, it's just crying out for that sort of um, travel. Like, travel at the moment in Africa you know, is four times as expensive as Europe. That is huge. It is. The, the average African airline seat, mm -hmm. this is regional flying, is 32 cents per seat kilometre. It's a quarter of that in Europe. 
And EasyJet and Ryan have two very successful examples. In Kenya and around this region, there have been almost not so successful ventures. For instance, Jetlink has almost forced to suspend operations because they ran out of cash doing the Juba Nairobi route. Yeah, but that's what I was saying. They're using the wrong equipment. They're not mm -hmm. really using that model because using the sort of airplanes they had just didn't give them that, that facility. Yes. And what we're going to do is, like, this is only the start. We'll have Dar es Salaam, we'll have Nairobi. We've also got a license in Accra and Angola, and we're looking at other places. So eventually, and fairly rapidly, FastJet will have airlines across Africa. Mm -hmm. Now, they're separate airlines because of the regulatory environment, but to the consumer, there's going to be one website, one great product. doesn't matter whether they fly in East Africa, West Africa, or wherever they're flying. Mm -hmm. FastJet will be the same model, the same service, the same quality, they know what to expect and they book it. So to the customer, it's one big airline. But in reality, it'll be individual it's airlines. Entities. Yeah. What kind of projections have you made for the, um, the market across these different regions? It's very difficult to predict exactly where we're going to be. But what yes. we said is, right, within six months we'll have five aircraft, within 12 months we're going to have 15 as a minimum. Um, my feeling is it'll be quite a lot more than that. Mm -hmm. We said within three years, at least 40 aircraft. Um, those are just predictions, I think they're fairly conservative predictions over where we could end up with the demand that there is in Africa at the moment. And the growing uh, middle classes, the, the amount of money the consumer now has to spend. And it's not just statistics. You walk around Africa, you walk around the cities, you see how people are living, you see the things they're doing. There's, right. a, there's a consumer demand, and one of the things consumers like is traveling. All right, talk to us about the shareholding structure here and where you're getting the money to fi finance this operation. Okay, where it came from, um, Lonro, who I'm sure everybody knows, yes. they have been yeah. in Africa for a long, long time. Sure. They had this aviation division, Lonro Aviation, which had five, five, forty, four, five, five, forty 5540 um, companies mm -hmm. in Kenya, Tanzania, Ghana, and Angola, each with a slightly different uh, level of shareholding. Um, we decided to reverse that out of Lonro Mm -hmm. into a separate company. So Lonro Aviation was taken out of Lonro into a company which was originally called Rubicon. We've now renamed it FastJet PLC. So like Lonro, we're on the London Stock Exchange. So the, the ownership of FastJet now, 67% um, of it belongs to Lonro, 5% to Easy Group, which is Stelios Hagiano, who started um, EasyJet, mm -hmm. and the rest is um, floated on the stock market. Now FastJet then has holdings in each of the 540 companies. So in Tanzania it's 90%, um, here it's 49% and, and so on because there are obviously different regulatory um, requirements in each country. All right, it sounds very fascinating. I wish you nothing but the, but the best. Well, thanks very much. It's an incredibly exciting time for us having launched the airline and it's in the air. I can imagine. Edwin, yeah. many thanks. Edwin, with us, CEO of FastJet.